Hi, I'm Michael Gross, host of the b and Railroad Museum Television Network. African-American waiters and commissary staff who worked on B&O dining cars were renowned for their top-notch customer service. The B&O's employee magazine was constantly filled with complimentary letters extolling their qualities and the B&O's reputation for elegant cuisine and high standards of service. The compliments were well-earned and well-deserved when one considers the physical conditions of a cramped dining car racing down the tracks and the challenges faced by the B&O chefs and waiters. The opportunity to work as a waiter or chef for the B&O provided an avenue of advancement for black men not widely available to African Americans in general in the early 20th century. B&O waiter Reverend James Kearse considered it a privilege to assist passengers for the railroad. He received impeccable training and worked in an exacting world where the railroad waiters were expected to keep their shoes polished, pants pressed, hair groomed, and fingernails clean. Many served as career employees with 20, 30, or more years of dedicated service. The courteous, reliable, and precise waiters of the B&O also served as a recognizable face of the railroad's advertising campaign. The friendly smile of the staff and the neat, clean, pressed, white linen uniforms offered the finest fare the B&O had to offer. Their smiles were seen as part of a uniform and often hid the long hours spent on their feet serving thousands of hungry travelers. In addition to waiting tables, waiters were responsible for cleaning and setting tables before and between meals, placing tablecloths, napkins, and place settings, and ensuring the dishes and silver were clean and free of fingerprints. Additional duties included prepping salads and washing dishes. Preparing food for passengers was always difficult at best, but dining car chefs faced the added challenge of cramped quarters, rocking tables, and a kitchen on wheels that moved at speeds of 80 to 100 miles an hour. Just imagine preparing and serving Thanksgiving dinner for countless travelers in a kitchen the size of a closet being shared by several cooks, much less carrying a tray full of food at high speeds with the rhythmic motion of the car under your feet. This is exactly what B&O waiters had to do all along the railroad's line, often serving as many as 450 meals on one train. Stay tuned for information on upcoming events at the B&O Railroad Museum. Thomas the Tank Engines visiting B&O Railroad Museum April 25th through 27th and May 2nd through 4th with a trainload of family fun. Kids of all ages can enjoy a ride with Thomas the Tank Engine and meet Sir Topham Hat. There'll be storytelling, live entertainment, and much, much more. Tickets are on sale now at TicketWeb.com slash D-O-W-T or call 1-866-468-7630. Don't miss Day Out with Thomas, the Go Go Thomas Tour. Promotional opportunities were few for African American waiters. The dining car stewards were all white men who oversaw the operation of each B&O dining car. African Americans could be promoted to waiter in charge, with the responsibility for running club cars, observation cars, and smaller dining cars. Waiters in charge could have as many as three waiters and cooks under their supervision. They waited tables as needed, and if working the club car also served as bartender and short order cook, preparing a light fare such as breakfast and sandwiches. Waiters and chefs on the B&O faced discrimination, derogatory comments, institutional racism, and had very limited privileges. They were not admitted to the African-American Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters for many years and had no representation for salary issues, seniority, and other working condition protections. Benefits could be arbitrarily taken from them. Waiters often had to sleep in the dining car and received eight hours of pay even if they worked longer shifts. When they finally could join the Brotherhood, they were given access to sleeping berths and received extra pay for working longer hours. These conditions began to change during the Civil Rights era as America was forced to confront racism. However, conditions remained less than ideal and doors that remained closed to African Americans took some time to open wider. When factoring in their ability to work in a racially charged environment and handle their duties, 
African-American dining car staff of the B&O made the adage, dinner in the diner, nothing could be finer, a reality. When visiting the B&O Railroad Museum, be sure to visit the exhibit on African-American dining car service, as well as the elegant collection of dining car china on display. This is Michael Gross, and thanks for watching the B&O Railroad Museum Television Network. Interested in learning more about the B&O Railroad Museum and Ellicott City Station? Follow us on Facebook and Twitter with daily updates on upcoming events, coupons, photographs, history, and things to do in Baltimore. You'll never be off track.